Uh, the company I'm about to invite to share some knowledge with you are really good at taking headaches away from IT managers and CIOs. Uh, they help to make end users really happy by removing some of the biggest headaches which everyone faces with printing and with managing user profiles, application security, and now even mobile device management technology. So I think in a nutshell, they really turn print driver problems into an absolute breeze. They're great at reducing the number of support calls which users field into the IT department or the help desk. And they've really delivered answers, cost savings, and just plain help to companies like John Holland Construction, Cabrini Health, Viola Environment, Chandler and McLeod, to name but a few of the well-known organizations that they've worked with. They're partners of Microsoft, Citrix, VMware, uh, to share some of the latest tools and tricks uh, I'd like to welcome from Tricerat, Joe Fonte. Hey, thank you, Ant. How are you going? Good, thanks. And Joe, uh, help me orientate. Are you very uh, early morning or you night time? What, what you got over in the US? Yep, so uh, I'm based in the, the home office here right outside Washington, D.C., so it's 9 p.m., just shy of. Well, thank you so much for staying up that late and being online with us. It's a good pleasure. Now, you've moved from technical role to becoming an analyst then a support engineer, and now you're responsible for all of Asia-Pacific with Triceract. No, that's exactly right. So I started with the company um, around five years ago in a, um, a help desk, the call center role, and I was able to work my way up and, and move into uh, pre-sales engineering, and then an opportunity presented itself to do um, territory management for Asia-Pacific, which uh, I have a, an interest in, so uh, I went ahead and took that. Well, awesome. Glad we can keep you awake at night, literally. And, um, I know you've got Microsoft and Net Plus qualifications, uh, but what I didn't know until yesterday is that you can hold a reasonable conversation in Japanese. Is that correct? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How would you say good morning in Japanese? <laughs> oh, that's easy. Everybody should get that. Ohayou gozaimasu. Okay, next right. sentence for you. How would you say in Japanese, large print files that fail or plug up the network really suck? Yeah, that, one, <laughs> that, one's, that, one's, that one's beyond me. Um. <laughs> My final translation question before I hand over to you, if you can give us back in Japanese, unhappy end users really create a lot of pressure. <laughs> no, never, never running no, haiku. Kidding, no, I, I, my my Japanese level is that of uh, navigating train stations and ordering food. So it's it's. Okay. It, it might be, really. might, I may have overstated. I may have overstated. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, John. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, no problem. No problem. All right, guys. So so thanks to Ant and Steve for the introduction, obviously, and for Tiba for hosting, Beth for organizing, and of course to everyone who's in attendance today. We appreciate the time. So we've been here for for some time. I'll try to keep this light. Keep it quick and interesting. Uh, my name is Joe Fonzi. I'm the Asia-Pac Territory Manager for Triceratops. Like I said, I've been here for about five years for the Citrix people or the people that count their lives in uh, Citrix releases. That's just prior to the releases in app. So I was doing this stuff in Presentation Server 4. Uh, been focused on APAC for around three years. I've been to Australia just as often as I possibly can. We just covered I do still live in the States, um, and I'm not really local, but I do my normal way around uh, Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney, CBD is fairly well on foot. Um, I have yet to get out to the Gold Coast, so if anyone in attendance today is actually uh, has offices on the Gold Coast and would like a face-to-face -face meeting in the springtime, my direct contact details on the last slide. Don't contact Tiva, contact me for a face-to-face -face in the Gold Coast. Uh, Joe, uh, I'm volunteering to actually join you if, if there's anyone. I, I, somehow, I thought, somehow I thought I wasn't going to get away with that, but uh, I figured I would, I would give it a shout. Fair enough. Um, I would like to try to, so Pritchard, Pritchard, Citrix printing is an old challenge. It's an old conversation. Um, I'd like to, my goal today is going to be to get you to think about it in a new way. Um, Citrix printing as a challenge is going to be coming back with a vengeance, and we're going to outline some of that. Just to set the stage, a couple facts about printing and the traditional Citrix challenge. Back in 2009, Citrix did a study looking back, I think it was five years, back to 2004, and, and identified printer drivers as the number one risk area impacting Citrix deployments. That's the number one thing that Citrix Consulting ran into uh, issues or support issues after a deployment. 
Then again, in 2010, um, a white paper came out from Citrix on delivering Zen Desktop to branch offices. Very common scenario in, um, in the Australian market. Citrix identified printing as the second largest consumer of bandwidth, exceeded only by rendering of HD video. Right? Think about that. Printing was only exceeded, and not by very much, by rendering HD videos on the client side. Citrix has made lots of efforts to sort of address these issues, but we're going to talk a little bit more uh, about why these things are going to come back. I'd like to take this time to go ahead and go do a quick poll. Um, I'd like to look at anyone here that's going to be taking on BYOD or a mobile embracement project. Okay, so let's have a look. Are you looking at BYOD or mobility project in the near future? Okay, we'll close the poll just in a few seconds. We've got over 80% of you voted. Okay, very interesting. Uh, wow, mobility 21%, both 58%, uh, and none 21%. Interesting, nobody's doing BYD by itself, but mm. uh, there's a lot of people doing BYD and mobility. Joe? Okay, great. Um, interesting because that study was obviously targeting the, the folks in attendance, the Citrix administrators. Um, in 2012, a study uh, found that 73% of companies uh, were mixing employee-owned and company-owned devices today. Um, that was a question asked to the end users. When you ask the same question to the administrators, only 36% of companies thought they were mixing privately owned devices and the corporate network. So there might be some folks out there accessing with their iPad that haven't mentioned to you that they're accessing with their iPad. Given current technology, Citrix Receiver for iOS does not support printing. AirPrint is something that is roadmapped for the second half of this year, so that's integration with printers that natively support the AirPrint protocol, but there is no support whatsoever planned for non-AirPrint printers, the standard MFD that you have attached to your network today. I wonder, and this is not a poll question, but I wonder how many of you out there that are looking at doing BYOD or doing a mobile integration of some kind were aware that you're not going to be able to print anything to your local network with that iOS device. As a quick takeaway, contrast the old Citrix challenge, where printing wasn't perfect, with the new mobile space, now it's just not possible. Let's expand a little bit on those two different challenge areas. Maybe a platitude, but the difficulty in managing a printing environment scales with the complexity of the environment. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and do the next poll. I'd like to see how many folks out there are running a mixed environment? So how many operating systems are you responsible for managing? And I'm talking about uh, user-facing operating systems. I'm, I'm, there, I'm sure there are plenty of guys on here that have 10 different versions of Linux on their routers. Uh, but I'm talking about the operating systems that your users interact with on a daily basis. Okay, Joe, we'll just uh, start that poll. So how many operating systems are there in your environment today? Okay, we'll just give it another five, ten seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll close the poll. All right, uh, very small percentage of you have one. Um, 
few people have two operating systems. The majority of you have three operating systems. There's some on four, and there's almost a third of you that actually have five or more. Not okay. unexpected. Okay. Good. So that supports my, my thought process. Mixed environments are becoming the standard now. And this is something we see in our um, in our discovery meetings over and over and over again. Um, you know, the promise of Windows XP, um, Windows XP was replaced with Windows 7, which is now replaced with Windows 8. Um, Server 2003 was... Joe, how we don't mention Windows Vista anymore? Y yeah, no, let's just ignore that. <laughs> um, I mean, that's, that's potentially out there too. And, and when we start talking about people bringing in their hardware from at home, that's something that, that we may play with as well. Uh, I don't usually mention it because I just haven't seen it on the large-scale corporate deployment as often. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, You're um, absolutely right. I was just making a joke of a joke. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, the, the standard is to have a mix, right? Everybody thought we'd be able to get rid of our 2003 farms when we put in a 2008 farm, and then we found that there was some application that just wouldn't, wouldn't play nice. And now administrators are expected to keep things working across uh, half a dozen different operating systems. And we might not even be thinking about OS X or, or the mobiles, iOS, Android, and Linux-based in clients. Right? Compound that with how many printer makes and models are in your environment today. If you're one of the folks that are in the, the five operating system camp and you have only 10 models of printer, we're talking about potentially 50 different driver packages. Right? If you have 100 different models of printer, you can see this starts to become a real problem. How can you possibly ensure compatibility for anyone? Slightly changing gears, speed of printing is another major concern for customers, and we, we have these discovery meetings. Um, the other side of it, it's not always expressed as the speed of the printing, but sometimes it's the impact on the network. When a user prints a large file, um, Actually, it plays into what Sarin of us was saying earlier in, in his demonstration. The root cause of your, your lagging input, maybe you know, HDX um, is falling apart a little bit, screen updates aren't working the way they should. Is it HDX or is it something else is consuming network? And do you know? Do you know what kind of bandwidth is being used by printing in your environment? Now, let's modernize the conversation and let's look at modern challenges. Many administrators are dealing with demands from users and sometimes mandates from uh, managers or CIOs to allow BYOD integration and to allow uh, iOS or Android devices into the corporate network. If you look at a simple scenario, somebody's walking around um, the office, even with a laptop that they've brought from home, and you know, I'm the user, I just want to print to that Rico, the one that's right outside the break room. How do we make that happen? Who's responsible for supporting the m machine that's not owned by the company? Or do you have that guy in your environment, the guy that has an iPad and believes it's the last device that he will ever own? He doesn't want to use anything else. We discussed earlier, Citrix has no plans to allow that user to print to your current printers. What are you going to do? How do we handle it? If the business decides that we need to be able to access line of business applications from iOS, and the user should be able to print as though they were on a standard thick client. Right, now we've outlined some of the problem areas. Compatibility, driver management, bandwidth, and mobility. Let's switch gears, talk about solutions. <clears throat> Tricerate screwdrivers, driver management tech. Uh, screwdrivers is a true universal driver product that completely takes the driver management off the issue. It's gone. How? How do we actually accomplish it? Fully compatible with mixed environments, everything from Windows 2000 and Metaframe XP all the way through Server 2012. Just got our Server 2012 validation a couple months ago, so no problems there. Screwdrivers is designed to be a simple fire and forget total replacement for Citrix and Windows native printer mapping. It's completely automated and needs no out-of-box configuration. It is literally a next, next finish installation. It takes minutes to do. Screwdrivers works by virtualizing any print driver. It is aware of the printer it is printing to. So this is not the same thing as throwing you know, HP UPD in there and pointing it to every printer in your environment and hoping it works. It does all of this 
while giving the administrator additional tools, customization options, scripting options, naming convention changes, the compression we're going to talk about here in a second. We're also able to retain all of the key features of the printer. If that printer can staple, if it can hole punch, if it can collate, Screwdrivers knows that, and those settings are accessible to you. Screwdrivers can handle mixed environments. What about bandwidth? Screwdrivers sits on top of a patented piece of technology called Triceret Metafile Format. How does that address bandwidth issues? Just as a quick aside, first, we don't make claims. If you look through our marketing documentation anywhere on our website, you won't see a claim about, you know, we achieve 95% compression ratios with a little star next to it that says, in our own labs under ideal conditions. Uh, instead, our product gives you a simple statistical logging tool. You can put the product in place and gather real-world performance data in your environment. We can do that within 20 minutes of putting the product in place, we can see real-world numbers on what you're achieving in your environment, on jobs that your users typically print. Next, if you're not particularly interested um, or thrilled by the minutia of print languages, if you've never argued with a coworker about whether or not PCL or PostScript was superior for a particular type of print job, it's actually really difficult to explain how important this TMF technology really is for Triceret. Um, in short, it was designed from day one specifically for transmitting print data in remote scenarios. We have a very cluey guy in-house. One of the founders of the company wrote it from the ground up. It's a vector-based tech, which obviously vector, vector-based images, it can scale without loss of fidelity, and it uses repeating data structures, so it's highly compressible. We employ some very cluey image detection and compression technology. So we're able to be aware of images in the print job. And again, I mentioned earlier, we are aware of the printer that you're currently printing to. This allows us to pick an image compression format that is natively supported by the printer. I'll give you a quick example. If the printer understands PNG graphics, we can encode an image in PNG and ship that all the way from the Citrix server right to the bare metal. That is a huge time savings and a huge data savings. Uh, it's also a lossless compression algorithm. We don't use lossy image formats. So you don't have any degradation of print quality. And finally, we are able to make intelligent decisions based on the environment that we're in for fonts. So we can detect fonts availability on the clients, uh, on the print server printer, in the case of our print server product, and on the physical printer itself. This is another huge data savings on complicated documents. Imagine a large Word document with many different fonts in it, or a large PDF that has many embedded fonts. This is how we handle bandwidth. Let's have a quick look at how we are addressing mobility. So the mobility question now, we've got this great screwdriver's tech, but it was never used on iOS. It doesn't, iOS doesn't have a print driver. How are we going to support a whole soup of different devices in the corporate network? You might have laptops, tablets, smartphones, thin clients, Citrix, Zen app, and or Zen desktop. You might even have, God forbid, terminal services, print servers, or directly attached network printers. The new industry unique tech from Torx Print lets you unify the old and new environments. We can do mobile printing from iOS and Android. The nice thing, these link lines are bi-directional. So I can share a printer from my laptop with my tablet. I can share a printer on my network with the tablet through the Torx server. I can share a printer in my Citrix session with the iPad, back and forth any way you want to do it. Desktop printing from OS X and from Windows. Linux thin client printing for scenarios where you have a direct attached USB printer. This has always been difficult with Citrix because you have to do USB forwarding, which means you have to natively install that print driver in the Citrix server, usually a no-no. Right. Finally, this is all a seamless printing experience for the end user, Zen app and Zen desktop. 
This is not a cloud print where we dump a file into some other application and then you're on the iPad, you have to switch application and then find your printer with AirPrint. None of that. The printer presents to you in the session, you click the printer, you hit print as you would if you were on a standard fat client. The thick client experience is what we're looking for. Printers and print settings follow you anywhere in the network regardless of your device. Automatic proximity printing based on subnetting or detection. So if we can find the printer wirelessly, we can present that to you. Secure printing, so different print, um, print modes. We can secure print with QR release, so you, the job only releases when you're physically at the, at the machine. And pool printing is a cloud stored print that lets you print, let it sit out there on the Torx server until you scan in at a printer. Intelligent selection ensures that the right printer is always used for a job. So imagine a scenario where you've got an architect, he's been working with a plotter all day, printing site plans, and now, day's over, he's going to go ahead and buy some tickets online and print that receipt. Triceric can actually detect the difference in page size, the difference in data type, and shunt that print job from the printer he selected, which was the plotter, over to the laser jet. Alert the user. That way we're not printing, imagine, uh, res prescription printers, receipt printers, things where we don't want to print standard jobs. And then finally, there's a social aspect to this. So users are able to pick their favorites from a list like you would in a, sort of like you would in AD, but you can also share your, print, your printers with friends and business associates, anyone else with the Torx application on their device. So you can easily imagine a scenario where somebody's come into a, um, a new work site, maybe you've got a new person uh, working in a functional group, instead of having to call the help desk and say, ah, I'm the new person in accounting, just started today, I need to have my printer set up, you could just ask the person in the office next to you, uh, what printer do you use? Oh, here, I'll share that with you. And then off you go. So, very exciting new stuff, industry um, unique. Just to bring it to a quick wrap up, naturally we have a ton of marketing collateral. I wasn't sure what to throw at you here. Um, you know, we have a number of relevant case studies where you know, our website is littered with case studies. Um, I would really recommend having a look at the case study for Cabrini Healthcare. They're an outfit located in Melbourne and it's a great success story for the screwdrivers technology. Um, the customer expressly stated that they would not have been able to achieve what they did if it wasn't for the screwdrivers tech. Uh, Veolia is also another interesting case study. Triceret services Veolia globally. Um, we've serviced them in Australia for a couple years now. I've been to the offices down there. Um, I know those guys quite well and they had some nice things to say about us. If you've seen something of value here and you want to know more, of course you should contact uh, Tiba. If you'd like to contact me directly with questions or you can sign up for any of our case studies or for a direct demo through the link that's on the screen. Um, if you have an office in the Gold Coast, you should just call me on that number. <laughs>